Hello world and welcome to Hacks. In this video we're going to be continuing the red teaming learning path on Try Hack Me. We are now on the third section of the first room and it's called Red Team Threat Intel. Employ threat intelligence to red team engagements and adversary emulation. Task 1. Threat intelligence or cyber threat intelligence is the information or tactics, techniques and procedures attributed to the adversary commonly used by defenders to aid in detection measures. The red cell can leverage CTI from an offensive perspective to assist in adversary emulation. Learning objectives. Understand the basics of threat intelligence and how it can be applied to red team engagements. Learn how to create threat intel driven campaign. Use frameworks to understand concepts and leverage threat intelligence. It's a very short introduction and we're completed. Task 2. What is threat intelligence? Expanding upon task 1, CTI can be consumed to take action upon data by collecting IOCs, indicators of compromise, and TTPs commonly distributed and maintained by Isaac's information and sharing and analysis centers. Intelligence platforms and frameworks also aid in the consumption of CTI, primarily focusing on an overarching timeline of all activities. Note, the term ISAC is used loosely in threat intelligence landscape and often refers to threat intelligence platforms. Traditionally, defenders use threat intelligence to provide context to the ever-changing threat landscape and quantify findings. IOCs are quantified by traces left by adversaries such as domains, IPs, files, strings, etc. etc. The blue team can utilize various IOCs to build detections and analyze behavior from a red team's perspective. You can think of threat intelligence as the red team's analysis of the blue team's ability to properly leverage CTI for detections. In this room, we'll be focusing on advanced persistent threat activity and how to leverage their documented TTPs. The next task will detail the specifics of threat intelligence and its significance to the red team. And all we have to do there is just click to complete the question. Task 3, applying threat intel to the red team. As previously mentioned, the red team will leverage CTI to aid in adversary emulation and support evidence of adversaries' behaviours. To aid in consuming CTIs and collecting TTPs, red teams will often use threat intelligence platforms and frameworks such as MITRE, ATT&CK, Tiber EU, and OST Map. These cyber frameworks will collect TTPs and categorise them based on varying characteristics such as threat group, kill chain phase, tactic, objective goal. Once a targeted adversary is selected, the goal is to identify all TTPs categorized with the chosen adversary and map them to the known cyber skill cyber kill chain. This concept is covered further in the next task. Leveraging TTPs is used as a planning technique rather than something team will focus on during engagement execution. Depending on the size of the team, a CTI team or a threat intelligence operator may be employed to gather TTPs for the red team. During the execution of an engagement, the red team will use threat intelligence to craft tooling, modify traffic and behavior, and emulate the target adversary. This concept is covered further in task five. Overall, the red team consumes threat intelligence to analyze and emulate the behaviors of adversaries through collected TTPs and IOCs. And again, we don't have any questions to answer, we just need to click complete. Task 4, the Tiber-EU framework. Tiber-EU threat intelligence based ethical red teaming is a common framework developed by the European Central Bank that centers around the use of threat intelligence. From the ECB Tiber-EU white paper, the framework for threat intelligence based ethical red teaming Tiber-EU enables European and national authorities to work with the finance infrastructures and institutions hereafter referred to collective entities to put in place a program to test and improve prove their resilience against a sophisticated cyber attack and you can see there we've got a nice diagram there that sort of explains a bit more about the generic threat landscape engagement and scoping service documentation service procurement all in the preparation stage testing we've got threat intelligence red teaming and closure we've got remediation planning and result sharing the main difference between this framework and others is the testing phase that requires the threat intelligence to feed the red team's testing the framework encompasses a best practice rather than anything actionable from a red team perspective. 
There are several public white papers and documents if you are interested in reading about this framework further. And you can see there we got a number of lists, but that's really it. We just need to mark the question as complete, and we've completed that section. Task 5, TTP Mapping. TTP Mapping is employed by the Red Cell to map adversaries collected TTPs to a standard cyber kill chain. Mapping TTPs to a kill chain aids the Red Team in planning an engagement to emulate an adversary. To begin the process of mapping TTPs, an adversary must be selected as the target. An adversary can be chosen based on the target industry, the employed attack vectors, the country of origin, and a number of other factors. As an example for this task, we have decided to use APT-39, a cyber espionage group run by the Iranian military known for targeting a wide variety of industries. We will use the Lockheed Martin cyber kill chain as our standard cyber kill chain to map TTPs. And there's the diagram there for the uh, Lockheed Martin cyber kill chain. We, uh, we went through this in the previous video, so if you want a bit more explanation on that, jump back to that one. The first cyber framework we will be collecting TTPs from is the MITRE ATT&CK framework. If you're not familiar with MITRE ATT&CK, it provides IDs and descriptions of categorized TTPs. For more information about MITRE and how to use the ATT&CK, check out the MITRE room. Attack provides a basic summary of groups collected TTPs. We can use Attack Navigator to help us visualize each TTP and categorize its place in the kill chain. Navigator visualizes the attack chain with the adversaries designated TTPs highlighted under the corresponding subsection. To use Attack Navigator, navigate to the group summary page next to the techniques used. Navigate to Attack Navigator Layers from the drop down. Navigate to View and Attack Navigate Layers should have opened with the selected group's TTPs highlighted in a new tab. Go through the Navigator layer, we can assign various TTPs we want to employ during an engagement. Below is the completed kill chain with mapped TTPs for APT39. Reconnaissance, no identified TTPs, used internal team methodology. Weaponization, command and scripting interpreter, they use PowerShell, Python and Visual Basic, uh, user-executed malicious attachments. Delivery, exploit public facing applications and spear phishing. Exploitation, registry modifications, scheduled tasks, key logging and credential dumping. Installation, ingress tool transfer, proxy usage. Command and control, web protocols, HTTP and HTTPS and DNS. Actions and objectives, exfiltrate over a C2. MITRE ATT&CK framework will do most of the work needed, but we can also supplement threat intelligence information with other platforms and frameworks. Another example of a TTP framework is the OST map. OST map provides a visual map to link multiple threat actors to their TTPs. Other open source and enterprise threat intelligence platforms can aid red teamers in adversary emulation and TTP mapping such as Mandiant Advantage, Ontic, CrowdStrike Falcon. And now we have a number of different questions. Question one, how many command and control techniques are employed by Carbonac? So if we head back over to the MITRE ATT&CK surface and we have a look, we find Carbonac on the left hand side and down here it says remote access software. Carbonac used legitimate programs such as any admin and team viewer for remote interaction C2 target systems. So I'm just gonna put two and hopefully that's the right answer. What sign binary did Carbonac use for defense, defense evasion? Okay, so it turns out the correct answer was run DLL32. I thought we would come under the masquerading area to like sort of evade stuff, but apparently it's, yeah, system binary proxy execution run DLL32. Okay, um, finally, what initial access technique is employed by Carb? Okay, admittedly this took me way longer than it should have done. I should have followed the instructions, but what initial access technique was employed by Carbonac? Um, a lot of the stuff I was reading online said they use spear phishing technique, techniques, but if we actually jump to MITRE ATT&CK thing here, it's supposed to be valid accounts. Submit that and it's correct. Task 6. Other red team applications of CTI. CTI can also be used during an engagement execution emulating the adversary's behaviour characteristics such as C2 traffic, user agents, ports and protocols, listener profiles. Malware and toolings, IOC and behaviors. The first behavioral use of a CTI we will showcase is C2, command and control, traffic manipulation. The red team can use CTI to identify adversaries' traffic and modify their C2 traffic to emulate it. 
An example of Red Team modifying C2 traffic based on Gather CTIs is Malleable, Malleable, Malleable Profiles. Jeez, I can't read. A Malleable Profile allows a Red Team operator to control multiple aspects of a C2 listener traffic. Information to be implemented in the profile can be gathered from ISACs and collected IOCs or packet captures, including host headers, post URIs, server responses, and headers. The gathered traffic can aid a Red Team to make their traffic look similar to the target adversary to get closer to the goal of the adversary. Adversary emulation. The second behavioral use of CTIs is analyzing behavior and actions of adversaries, malware, and tools to develop your offensive tooling that emulates similar behaviors or has similar vital indicators. An example of this could be ad adversary using custo a custom dropper. The red team can emulate a dropper by identifying traffic, observing syscalls and API calls, identifying overall dropper behavior and objective tampering with file signatures and IOCs. Intelligence and tool gathering from behavioral threat intelligence can aid a red team in preparing the specific tools they would use to be uh, action plan TTPs. And there's no question there, we just need to confirm that we've read it and then we can move on. Task 7. Creating a Threat Intel Driven Campaign A Threat Intel Driven Campaign will take all knowledge and topics previously covered and combine them to create a well-planned and researched campaign. The task flow in this room logically follows the same path you would take as a red team to beginning a campaign. Number 1. Identify framework and general kill chain. Number 2. Determine targeted adversary. Number 3. Adversaries, TTPs and IOCs. Number 4. Map gathered threat intelligence to a kill chain or framework. Number 5. Draft and maintain needed engagement documentation. Number 6. Determine and use needed engagement resources, tools, C2 modification, domains, etc. In this task, we will be walking through a red team's thought process from beginning to end of planning a threat intel driven campaign. The hardest part of planning a threat intel driven campaign can be mapping two different cyber frameworks to make this process simpler. We have provided a basic table comparing the Lockheed Martin cyber kill chain and the MITRE attack framework. And as you can see there, the cyber, t yeah, the Lockheed Martin and the MITRE attack, um, they sort of have the similar structure, just different naming. To begin working through this task, download the required resources and launch the static site attached to this task. Your team has already decided to use the Lockheed Martin cyber kill chain to emulate APT41 as the adversary that best fits the client objectives and scope. Answer the questions below. Open the attack navigator layer identified TTPs to the cyber kill chain. Once TTPs are identified, map them to the cyber kill chain in a static site. To complete the challenge, you must submit one technique per name kill chain section and once it's complete you will receive a flag below okay what web shell is apt41 known for what lullabies living off the land binaries tools that's apt blah 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 what tools does apt41 use to mine and monitor sms traffic okay i'm going to be real with you didn't like these questions specifically this one so I was going through, matching them up with the ones that were highlighted in blue, and it was just not accepting any of them. I'm not sure if it was a specific case. Um, in the end, I cheated and I had to go and check somebody else's answers. And funnily enough, we had a lot of the same answers, but yeah, I just had a lot of issues with this. I didn't like this question whatsoever. The other ones were fairly straightforward. You can just jump straight into here and it will give you the answers to like a lot of the questions about what technologies they use. So going through at the top, we got PowerShell, phishing attachment or spear phishing attachments, external remote services, bitch jobs dns key login then we got what web shell is apt41 known for aspx spy what living off the land binaries and scripts does apt41 use and it's cert util what tool does apt41 use to mine sms sms traffic and the answer was message tap yeah um shame really because it was a really good room but yeah i did not like this format at all um didn't enjoy that. I got I got the flag, but I had to go and look elsewhere to get direct answers because it was too much trial and error for me. Uh, I prefer things to just be black and white when it's questions like this. I, I don't like, oh, it could potentially be this. Um, and then not having the answer work out for some for whatever reason. I don't know. Might have been something I was doing wrong. But yeah, that is task seven complete. 
And finally, task 8. When planning an engagement, it is essential to note the significance of adversary emulation and how threat intelligence can aid you in identifying adversaries and their behaviour. Each red team will have its methodology of collecting and digesting threat intelligence in a real world. This room covered basic ground level knowledge of varying concepts commonly applied to red team scenario. When planning an engagement, remember that it is crucial to look at scenarios from all perspectives, offensive, defensive and the adversary. Threat intelligence allows us as the red team to look deeper into an adversary's behavior by using a blue team's methodology to, to our advantage and then we just click complete and we should get our lovely tokens red team title yes seven day streak free cool okay i'm just gonna tweet out that i just completed that room i am so close to getting that red teamer title i cannot wait um got two of those now that's fantastic so my thoughts on the room are this uh, with the exception of this question here i'm sorry to whoever made it but i just hated it uh the room was really good in general i didn't realize there was so much emphasis on red teaming red team operators impersonating um apts or existing advanced persistent threat players uh, i didn't realize there was so much focus on that i thought the purpose of a red team was just to turn up you know, whether you go in physically into the building and social engineer your way in, it was just a way to attack an organization as you would if you were an attacker. I didn't realize there were like areas where you specifically impersonated existing threats. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. I hope you liked it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down and leave a note in the comments. I'll see you next time. Kind regards.